Here we have a lawnmower with nitrous, speed enhancements, cutting the yard. This build is helping me mentally prepare myself for the yard work I will be doing in the days to come. I don't like doing standard meta things, but I decided to give Cyclone Impale a go if I could really juice up the speed, and that's exactly what I did. Not in terms of AoE, but in raw movement speed. To acquire Sonic spin speeds, I made a homemade pie with the key ingredients of Gladiator Challenge Charges, Tailwind, Elusive, Berserk, Onslaught, Devotos, Rampage, and a Quicksilver Flask. This way we could reach high levels of zoom and struggle to control our character's movements. Now let's get into the gear. To start off with gear, we have Shadows and Dust. These gloves you basically use to get uh, Rampage up. You can also do, alternatively, a weapon swap with the Sinvicticus Axe if you would like to, if you want to free up your glove slot to have life and other things. But I was fine just taking up the glove slot with these bad boys and getting a vulnerability on Curse on Hit gloves. They give Crit Multi, Crit Chance, they feel good, and they give us Rampage, which gives us a lot of movement speed and maps. Uh, next up we have Rhythesloth's Coil. This belt is solely for damage as well as having a nice bit of life on it. I would recommend qualitying these with Abrasive Catalysts to get more damage out of the Rhythesloth's Coil belt. For rings, we basically have Resistance Rings along with Life as well as a Mark of the Elder. So if you're using a Mark of the Elder, you need your other ring to be a Shaper Ring. These are definitely a little or a decent amount less damage than a Fizz Buff Effect Herald of Purity Rings, but... These rings allow us to have a bit more life along with uh, more versatility in our, basically our reservation setup because we don't use uh, Herald of Purity in the build. Next up we have for our amulet, we have an amulet with a lot of life. So we have life, strength, crit multi, accuracy, as well as high flat fizz. We also get a fizz leached his life uh, craft on this so that way we can have leech from the amulet. As well as we allocate a good life node, discipline and training. Next up, our helmet, we have Devota's Devotion. We go for this basically for the movement speed along with some attack speed. And we get a Berserk Enchant on it with the 40% reduced Rage Loss per second. Uh, for me, buying this helmet was very expensive. I bought it for 13x. There's not many on the market. You don't need Devota's Devotion at the end of the day to run this build. I would say what's more important is the Enchant. Berserk has 40% reduced late rage loss per second. This allows us to have much higher uptime on our Berserk, allowing us, allowing us to get a lot of movement speed in maps, a lot more than 20% movement speed from the helmet slot. I would much rather recommend getting a, a rare helmet, just crafting high life on it with the Berserk enchant before you go for a Devotos or a different helmet like the uh, Died Bell, I believe, gives you movement speed, attack speed, and cast speed if you've cast a Warcry recently. But yeah, this was a this is a very expensive route. Honestly, just go for a rare helmet, craft it yourself. You'll lose 20% movement speed. It's not that much because we have a lot of movement speed from a lot of other things as well. Next up for our weapons, we have Paradoxica and Savior. This is a really standard meta combo for high PDPS damage. At the end of the day, you could also make a Star Forge work or... Outside of those, you can go for two Paradoxicas if you can't afford the Savior yet. Stuff like that is what I would recommend. Um, it's pretty expensive, but outside of these, I guess you can go for maybe a Terminus Edge is a very budget option at the end of the day. And lastly, our boots, well actually not last, but our boots, we go for movement speed as well as Elusive and Tailwind. You can pretty much buy a pretty standard copy of Tailwind Elusive boots for about 4 or 5x. I would recommend going this route if you could buy one with an open prefix so you can craft movement speed and onslaught on kill. That would be ideal. I made the mistake of trying to craft these belts myself, and I wasted like 20x before just buying a pair. And so, learn from my mistakes, and I wouldn't highly recommend trying to craft these yourself. Just buy a pair that's already made with an open prefix. For our chest, we went for a really high life, attack crit, and the socket attacks have minus 15 total mana cost. This basically gives us free cyclone. We don't have to worry about mana sustain at all. We don't need a mana flask. Um, this is a pretty expensive craft, the one chest I have here. Uh, at the end of the day, if you can't afford something like this, definitely just go for a Duressa's Defiance. This, this chess piece is actually faster in terms of our clear speed and maps, while sacrificing basically some life and some single target damage. And we have to, at that point, grab a uh, Mana Flask, so that way we can sustain our Cyclone. But other than that, um, really a Duressa's Defiance is just fine if you can't afford getting a really high-end crit, crit chance, less mana cost chest. Another notable option would be one with Killed Enemies Explode if you really want to go optimal clear speed and drop the attack crit chance or the socketed mana skills cost. And that 
wraps it up for our gear. Now let's go in game and look at our passive tree, flasks, pantheon, and our gem link setup. Now that we're in game, let's go over the gem links. To begin with, um, basically for our leap slam, faster attacks, you see I have pulverize here. This is basically I'm swapping it out with fortify. If I'm going around mapping, I have pulverize in so we have a much bigger area of effect for clearing. And then we get to doing boss fights. We swap to do fortify so that way we just have 100% uptime on our fortify. We're much more defensive this way and don't have to proc it while leap slamming around onto the boss. Uh, for our single target setup, it's impale linked to cyclone linked to Awaken Brutality, Awakened Fizz, and Rage Support, as well as uh, Fortify here. Um, for this setup, I wouldn't particularly recommend, like, you don't necessarily need Awakened Brutality or Awakened Melee Fizz. You can get away with Melee Fizz as well as just regular Brutality. These are high-end expensive upgrades. They're really going to help out your single target a decent amount, but at the end of the day, you're not they're not going to be necessary to be able to clear end-game content. For our Rings our other weapon setup over here. We have basically Moten Shell, Dread Banner, and Ancestral War Chief, Val Ancestral War Chief. Basically, whenever we're bossing, we'll pop our Ancestral War Chief, Val Ancestral War Chief for more melee damage, along with our Dread Banner, which is just one of the auras we have on, which I forgot to reserve here, and a Molten Shell, which basically we keep that on our left click so we don't have to really think about it and we just have it all the time all the time during mapping and then we pop a Val Molten Shell whenever we get into something dicey. For our boot setup we have double strike linked to maim, linked to multi strike, linked to brutality. This is pretty much when we get to the end of the map or whatever we want to just really clear the map boss fast we just pop some Val double strike boys and they go and basically erase whatever content we get to at the end of the map. Makes uh, killing the boss really easy. For our helmet setup we have basically this used to be a portal scroll I think or not portal scroll, portal gem, along with a higher level in power, along with berserk all the way at level 21. Basically, at level 21 versus level 6, it's like the difference between 27% more movement speed and 30% more movement speed. So don't really worry about buying a level 21 berserk versus a level 20 berserk with 20 quality. At the end of the day, they'll do pretty much the same thing. You'll notice here I have it linked to enhance as well. That's because during berserk we have... Uh, basically, for every quality on that, we get 1% increased attack damage, so level 4 enhance gives us 24% increased attack damage. It's just a nice little extra damage boost. For our glove setup, we have Pride, linked to Blood and Sand, as well as Flesh and Stone. One of the things you could here, do here, you'll see I have some extra sockets here and there. You could maybe get a cast when damage taken set up if you really wanted to going, but that's basically the links I have set up. and. Let's get into now the flasks. Uh, flasks, we went for a life flask, obviously, along with a lion's roar for more melee fizz, along with a bottle of faith and a diamond flask. These are our diamond, these are our damage flasks, along with quicksilver for the speed while we're mapping. Now, we went over flasks. If you can't afford bottled faith, I would probably just swap this out for a defensive flask. At the end of the day, the main thing this is helpful for is when we get to a boss and we need single target and we don't even have it all the time because a lot of times I'm pretty bad at managing my flasks and I spend it all inappropriately. And uh, long story short, I would swap this out for a defensive flask if you cannot afford a bottled faith. Let's get into the passive tree. So to start off with, you can see right here I was a champion um, after the fact. This is basically... After I'd done all my playtime as a gladiator, and I was doing bosses, and I just wanted to get a little bit more single target on bosses, I messed around with champion. Champion, at the end of the day, is more well-rounded. It's a lot better damage for single target, but it's just not as much fun factor when it comes to mapping. So, personally, I'd probably still recommend doing gladiator for the fun factor of mapping, but... If you wanted to actually have a more well-rounded character, want to be, be able to do mapping pretty fast as well as doing bossing, well, this is probably your ticket. The Gladiator could do boss as well, just not quite as well as Champion. It was a little less tanky, and it had less single target, obviously. Um, but it mapped faster, was more fun. So it's up to you whether or not you want to do Gladiator or Champion. For the, for the Gladiator, I will say this. For the Gladiator, I grabbed Arena Challenger. Then I went over to gratuitous, gratuitous Violence, and then up into Outmatch and Outlast. That's why I went for my Gladiator setup. It worked pretty well while mapping. While bossing, it was a little less single target. Or not, it was a fair amount less single target than Champion. But it was a lot of fun while mapping. So I would personally recommend this for if you want to enjoy mapping. Whereas if you want to enjoy um, 
single target and being more well-rounded, I'd recommend Champion. If you're going for a Starforge setup, I'd probably recommend going for a Slayer in this case. If you're going for Starforge setup, I'd go for Slayer, something like this. So that's my three recommendations. If you're going two-handed sword with bad crit, Slayer. If you want more well-rounded version that does better on bosses, Champion. If you want to have fun and go with lots of speed, go for Gladiator. Aside from the Ascendancies, we grab a lot of life on our tree, along with crit chance, crit multi from the good sword nodes, as long, along with the good crit nodes here. And then we go into grabbing basically our cluster jewel setup. We decided to grab two for this build, and the longer the short is, at the end of the day, I'm not sure I really would recommend the setup I have here for the large duel. This is very expensive. We have blood scent plus deep cuts on a large duel. These mods are very rare to come together and there's a very few of them on the server and because of that they're very expensive they're like 20 to 30 x jewels i would not recommend them i would much higher recommend getting just a jewel with deep cuts along with some other decent notables for damage blood scent is only one rage um per second on hit and we ended up deciding this is only kind of okay and we use rage support anyways for keeping rage up better because we get basically 2.5 rage per second from rage support in which case blood support blood scent is less necessary because initially i was thinking if i grab blood scent i'm not going to feel like i need rage but i still felt like rage was good and therefore blood scent became less, rel less relevant and i'd recommend getting better just damage notables here don't worry about spending so much on getting blood scent on your jewel next up we have our medium cluster jewels the other thing i'd recommend here is frankly i would go war cry stuff war cry jewels and I'd pick up Battle Cry. It's only three passive points here. We don't really have to sacrifice a notable at that point. And if we pick up um, Battle Cry, it basically allows us to invest in some War Cry jewels. And I would only keep one of these cluster jewels. I would keep Hexbreaker and Precise Focus. Precise Focus is almost good, is a good crit, is warning call. And Hexbreaker basically makes us immune to curses, which is super quality of life while mapping. And then for their war cry jewels, I'd pick up mob mentalities with cry wolves, or no, mob mentalities with uh, warning calls. I'd pick up a bunch of those, more or less, and that would give us all the rage generation we would need. You don't need blood scent at that point, and you can drop brutality or rage support here and grab a actual good support. And you'll have probably a much better time with something like that, and you'll keep very high uptime on your rage and be just zooming around all the time. That pretty much clears it up for the tree. Now let's look over Pantheons. So for Pantheons, we want to go for Soul of Lunaris because it's going to give us movement speed when we have nearby enemies, which is just more movement speed for us. And we can also get some extra dodge chance, which doesn't hurt. And avoiding projectiles is also beneficial to staying alive. Next up, we have Soul of Rislatha again uh, for Life Flasks. Other than that, the other good choice for even more speed would be Soul of Gurukhan with the um, capturing the Stalker of the Endless Dunes, which I believe is on the dig map. So you just need the, uh, what you call it, and the dig map. Okay, that covers Pantheon, that covers Flasks, that covers Gear, that covers everything for the character. I don't think I forgot anything for this, except for maybe Bandits, which we kill all or kill or save Alira are the two options I would go with. Probably save Alira is the way to go. All right, that covers it all. I hope you guys enjoy this build. Hope it looks fun to you. Uh, if you want a build that's fun to run around with, you speedy mapping and you get to spin to win, this is, uh, this is a good build too. You guys have a good one. Hope you liked it.